tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He's near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. I was boarding in a home uh, with people I'd never known. I arrived there three o'clock in the morning. And I got off the train in North Bay, and that's the first time I met these people. I didn't even know where I was going. And that's, uh, it was very difficult, especially the first two, three weeks. I was extremely homesick. Yes, it's hard to be away from home. I believe some of you could identify with Roy and might wonder if he would go home. I'm glad that you've joined us today with a desire to know more about what great things God can do in the lives of his people. Our guests are Roy and Dorothy Tichu from North Bay, Ontario. As you've heard earlier, as a young man, Roy left his community and family in Moose Factory. He entered into an environment that wasn't as friendly as he thought. At different times maybe because of who I was, uh, my cultural background, but that didn't stop me. I, like I say, I was determined that I was going to rise above situations and I was determined to, to keep on. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding, that you may preserve discretion, and your lips may keep knowledge. I have been disciplined prior to leaving home. I had good discipline from my parents, and I learned to respect those older than I was. Um, we were taught not to be disrespectful to, to anybody or anyone's uh, property. If we, uh, if we did that, we were disciplined and we were all encouraged to work, help around the home. And I believe all that training I had at home really helped me and to be responsible for myself. And it's very easy to blame somebody else when things, you know, get difficult. Passing the blames to others ain't something new. It started from the fall of man. In Genesis chapter 3, after Adam and Eve were called out from hiding, God asked Adam a series of questions. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? God doesn't need to ask questions. Being God, He knows everything. He asks questions for our own good, to give us an opportunity to face the facts, to be honest and to confess our sins. However, when God asked Adam if he had eaten from the tree, Adam never said, I did. Instead, he blamed both God and his wife. When God asked Eve, she blamed the serpent. They were excuses, but no confessions. In Psalm 32, verse 3 and 4, King David talked about what his unconfessed sins did to him. My bones grew old through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into drought of summer. He must have felt really drained, worn out, guilty. Are you feeling down today because of something you did in an unguarded moment? Did you stumble and fall by yielding to sin? There's good news for you from the Word of God. These things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Christ will speak on your behalf. So turn to Jesus Christ today and let Him deal with the sin in your life. If you need prayer and encouragement, call us. Now let's hear how Roy started his journey of faith. Winter of 1962, that I uh, accepted the Lord. 
but I've gone to the services prior to that different times and it was winter one winter night that my brother and I uh, accepted the Lord the same night after visiting with Doug Taylor and he explained the, the plan of salvation to us and we were under, uh, under conviction even prior to that, obviously. Mm. And it was since then that uh, I have been a Christian. How shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. I've heard it through uh, preaching of the missionary who came in here in the early 60s and uh, Doug Taylor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I heard the gospel preached uh, quite a bit through the through his preaching, and I've also uh, had uh, contact with the missionaries. There was about four of them here at that time: Helen Heisey and uh, Betty Lumley and Doug Taylor and his wife Anne. Mm -hmm. And whenever I used to go over to their house, I used to see either one of them reading the Bible or talking about, you know, reading their Bible. and I felt that there were people who I could uh, trust and uh, rely on to, uh, to teach me uh, how to live and how to walk uh, in my newfound life in, in the Lord. He makes the flowers grow He painted the rainbow Our wonderful Lord The mountains high That flood with the bluest sky He guards in my heart to sigh a wonderful Lord Come listen to His heart beats for me and you He sees all the things you do Our wonderful Lord His song burn Sing praises and loving words There's never a prayer on her Our wonderful Lord Yes, God is listening. Psalm 34 verse 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their cry. Assurance from God's word gives Roy the confidence to trust God's guidance and provision. I left Moose Factory when I was about 18 years old. I went back to school and I went back to school after working for a while and almost two years earning a living. And I felt that I couldn't continue working the type of work I was doing. To, I felt that I needed to do something else. So I decided to uh, go back to school and I went back to upgrade myself and did different things to train myself for different things that, until I found such, uh, I guess, type of work that I enjoyed. I have gone through different types of employment before I really settled on a few jobs that I have held in the last 33 years. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Before that, I had the security of uh, a loving family, my siblings, 
my dad was home then, and the, whole, the community itself, because I knew people in the community. And it was very easy to get that feeling, maybe I should go home. I'll feel better over there if I go home. But I think if I had done that, um, I don't think I would have done what I have done in, you know, wherever I've worked. And uh, I had worked for Children's Aid Society, and I worked for Ontario government for almost 12 years. And then in the last 17 and a half years, I've worked for uh, Veterans Affairs Canada. So uh, it's the type of work that I have been doing it involved people. So it's the last 33 years of dealing with people in different, many types of personalities. And it hasn't been easy, but uh, I've always uh, learned to turn to the Lord each time I, I was in a situation where I felt I needed help. And, and the Lord has always come through for me. And of course, I had a very supportive spouse at home mm -hmm. who prayed as well. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has given me a wonderful wife. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I've always found um, a desire in my heart to find a place of worship where I would learn from God's Word and have fellowship with the Lord's people. The biggest thing that has, I've learned uh, is that I've prayed and I've always asked the Lord to help me see the people the way he sees them. And I've never looked at the cultural background of the people. I discovered that the, because of my faith in the Lord, and they believed the same way I did, and they were an encouragement to me as a young person. And that's basically what really helped me after I left home. And I know it's the Lord that has helped me in every situation. If I tried to handle the situation myself, then I most likely would have messed up things and maybe not uh, received well. His love reaches to every man All nations and to who, who, every land His arms will embrace the young and the old And his miracles unfold Oh, and don't you see His breath is a gentle breeze Creation is artistry Our wonderful Lord heaven bright His beauty will be our light Adorned in a robe of white Our wonderful Lord His love reaches to Nations and to who, who every land His arms will embrace the young and the old And His miracles unfold oh, 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 oh. Do you know that He made the flowers grow? He painted the rainbow What a wonderful Lord A wonderful Lord
So, Dorothy, where were you from? I was born and raised in southern Ontario, in uh, uh, the Port Rowan area, which is uh, near Lake Erie. I was uh, brought up in a, a Christian home. I accepted the Lord when I was 11 years old. Uh, after high school, I went to Teachers College in London, Ontario. And one day my aunt, who was a teacher, asked me if I would be interested in going north when I graduated from Teachers College, if we could both get a job together. And that's what happened. We, we both went to Moose Factory to teach. And I was up there for two years. And then uh, I left to go to uh, Bible College in Toronto. And uh, I was in Bible College for three years. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. I think it had for a long time been on my mind that I wanted to go to, to Bible school. And also I found out later that my parents had always prayed that, that all of us, uh, my siblings and myself, would all finish high school and go to Bible school. And that, that prayer was answered. Uh, it was during the time that, uh, that I was in Toronto that Roy moved to Toronto as well and we got to know each other there. But then I went north after that and he was down south. Uh, so it wasn't until um, after he finished school in, uh, I guess it was Sudbury, that uh, he moved back north again and I was teaching in the, the Moosonee area. Uh, in Moosonee itself, actually, uh, by then, and we were married in 1973. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, Roy was placed in Capscasing with Children's Aid, so we lived there for uh, nine months before we moved back to, to Moosonee. And while we were there, um, during those years, the Lord gave us two children, and um, I stayed home to look after the children, and we were able to foster a few children from um, uh, communities nearby. And that was, that was a real blessing, to have these children in our home. Uh, and just to meet their needs, and above all, to, to teach them about the Word of God. And it was such a joy when I was able to, to lead them to the Lord. We lived in, in Moosonee until 1989, and then uh, the Lord moved us on to North Bay, and it was uh, at that time that our son had started high school, so we felt really privileged that we were able to go together as a family that Roy had a job to go to in, in North Bay so that we could stay together as a family. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We started very young to, uh, to read to our children. Um, they, they heard a lot of Bible stories. We had uh, uh, Bible story books with pictures where we were able to uh, to use uh, use the pictures to explain stories to them and then as they got older we we would read more and of course help them to learn to read themselves and uh, we tried to help our children to uh, to learn to know the Lord and, and to follow instructions, to be obedient. Um, it, it was something that we had to keep doing consistently. Mm -hmm. And we had rules in our home and we, uh, we taught our children that it's important to, uh, 
to follow rules and especially to be obedient to to us and through that I believe they they learn to know also that um, it's very important to be obedient to the Lord we found that uh, we needed to pray with our children when they encountered problems and that was one of the the problems that that our son had to uh, had to deal with and, and we tried to help him through it and steer him through um, we found that he when he was young he he was very careful in his choice of friendships and we were thankful for that Kneel down by the side of your mother my boy I have only a moment I know so live while I give you this parting advice it is all that I have to bestow hold fast to the right What you learn from your mom and dad is very important, but the community also helps raise children. You probably heard, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Roy explains. When you look at First Nation young people, I think there has to be a lot of support and encouragement and they, uh, from the parents or family and whatever they try to achieve and to encourage them to work at it and just basically to uh, be a determined individual it's, it's not easy no matter what you do I think in general to the, the community people you know to encourage no matter what the young person is trying to achieve, some will stand out more than others because everything that a person does is important, whether he's a great athlete or doing other types of work. Every person needs to be encouraged that they set goals for themselves and pursue that goal. And that's what I had to, to do many a times. And I may have changed some of the goals as I go along, and that's natural. And it's okay to do that. But basically, I have had to learn to work hard. And even though I may have been discouraged, and I say, I've got to do this, no matter what. And I think basically today, that's what the young people need to do and need to be encouraged and supported by everybody and push aside any destructive criticism. When you're young, when a person is a young individual, we know it all. We don't like to be told. And I think if the young people can change that attitude and maybe go back to respecting the, the elders in the community, and try to find a happy medium in communicating and listening to the, the older people, the advice. And we may not always agree with them because we're living in uh, changing times today. And so you adapt, you adopt the ideas and you adjust to uh, maybe make it work for you type of thing. Yes, we all need to have balance and include God in our decision-making. As we look at what's going on in our society, success in career seems to be the driving force of many people, like the businessman. One said, I do not believe a man could ever leave his business. He ought to think of it day by day 
and dream of it by night, thinking men know that work is the salvation of the race, morally, physically, socially. Work does more than give us a living, it gets us life. But the philosophy in Ecclesiastes is different. In chapter 6, King Solomon illustrated the emptiness of a life that has wealth and riches and does not include God. Two men came into the picture. The first one has riches, wealth, honor. He has everything he wants, but he doesn't enjoy it. The second one lives long and has many children, but he is not satisfied. Both of them left God out of the picture. The author then concluded that it is better not to have lived at all than to be rich and famous but miserable. The Bible also says that things could be different. When we give God control of our lives, many earthly blessings are for us to enjoy. Remember our Creator. Fear God. Always acknowledge Him in all that you do. The issue is not a good job, money, good health, or even family. We all need God in our lives. It is only through His Son, Jesus Christ, we can take hold of what's true. God has in store for you a bright future and a joyful, filled life. Confess your sins. Don't make excuses. I encourage you to put your total trust in Jesus today. If you have questions about God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ, call us. We'll leave you with Roy's conclusion. If it hadn't been for my faith in the Lord, I, Roy Chichu alone wouldn't have made it. I